Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here. And as to be expected, once again, the American Federal Reserve as well as the Bank of Canada have raised baseline underlying interest rates by 0.75%, bringing the underlying rate now to 3.25%, which is the highest overnight rate that we've seen since early 2008. That's a long way from the forecasted rate of 0.5% expected by end of this year, forecasted in early 2021. So this now represents the fifth rate height that we've seen throughout the course of 2022 which of course has the goal of countering rampant inflation, which as of right now has slightly dipped down to 7.6% in July, but remains among the highest that we've seen in decades. So this means that while governments are desperately trying to keep the economies under control as of right now, well, it was pretty much inevitable that interest rates would have to rise following the pandemic era duo of low interest rates and infinite money. This also means though that for the first time in decades, interest rates have now increased to a rate higher than their pre previous peak, thus breaking out of a perpetually decreasing interest rate environment that we'd experienced since the late 1970s. And if you haven't noticed, well, quantitative tightening along with surging inflation and increasing interest rates that are all underway right now are materially impacting three main things, consumer spending patterns, the housing market, as well as the equity markets. So for these reasons, well, as investors ourselves, it's really important that we have a general idea of what we could expect to see over the next couple of years, although no one ultimately knows as well as how all of this will impact our investments moving forward. That's what we'll be speaking about in today's video. So it's no secret that while the American Federal Reserve once said that the inflation following the pandemic era stimulus would be transitory, well, the narrative has since changed quite a bit. And surging inflation is the main reason why we've been seeing continued interest rate increases throughout the course of 2022. Consumers are simply shocked when seeing their grocery bills 30% higher than what they were in 2021. And it's when the Fed looks at this inflation-related data that they make decisions as to whether or not they'll continue raising rates or not. This is because when the Federal Reserve and Bank of Canada do choose to raise interest rates, well, they make this decision by looking at the price fluctuations and variations month to month and year over year for goods and services to then make the decision as to whether or not to continue raising rates with the goal of lowering overall price points. Of course, countering inflation with interest rates is somewhat of a double-edged sword as it does counter inflation. However, it also also significantly impacts the cost of borrowing and in turn buyer purchasing power for homes as well as negatively impacting companies that utilize debt to grow their operations, mainly tech and growth companies. This is exactly why we've been seeing the real estate as well as equity markets tumbling from all time highs following the euphoric cheap money period experienced over the past couple of years and tipping consumer sentiment towards extreme fear, clearly highlighted by trending Google search queries for a housing market crash higher than ever even in 2008. And if that wasn't enough, well, all of this puts additional strain on the economy and the companies that operate within it, which ultimately always trickles down to the end consumer and the workforce who get the short end of the stick through massive waves of layoffs and higher price points. Bottom line, this is a tough situation that we currently find ourselves in and could easily tip into a further recession over the course of the next 12 to 24 months if interest rates remain high and we continue experiencing experiencing financial contraction throughout the economy. In fact, looking at the data, it's evident that with the current fiscal policy circumstances weighing down the economy, it's struggling to maintain the momentum that it achieved in the first and second quarters of the year, with anticipated growth rates for the third and fourth quarters to be in the waters of 1%, which is down from the 3% rates that we saw in the first half of the year. So in regards to rising rates, what could we expect in the near future? Well, for one thing, we'll continue seeing rates rising gradually until the Bank of Canada and Federal Reserve consider inflation to be back under control, which in simple terms means back down to a rate that they consider to be healthy and manageable, which happens to be around 2% annually. But to do this, these institutions are pretty much balancing on a tightrope, where on one side, raising rates too high and too quickly lowers price points, but also contributes to higher unemployment. On the flip side, if they drop rates too quickly, like in 2020, this has the the opposite effect of increasing price points over time and lowering unemployment because companies' margins tend to swell. So realistically, if all of that sounded quite complicated, well, just keep in mind that the Bank of Canada and Federal Reserve are in a tough spot right now where they need to continue trying to maintain economic growth over time while also limiting and controlling inflation, bringing it back down to that 2% target, which between you and I though, probably isn't going to happen in harmony. In essence, for the Fed and BOC to bring inflation levels back down to that 
2% target, they'll have to continue raising interest rates for the foreseeable future, which will almost undoubtedly continue slowing down economic growth. And it's here really that looms the fear of a potential recession. All right, so in terms of how this has all been impacting the market, well, here's the unfortunate part about what's been said in parallel to these recent rate hike increases. Both the American Federal Reserve as well as the Bank of Canada have recently stated the fact that they're committed to continue raising interest rates to the extent necessary in order to combat surging inflation levels and again bring them back down to that target 2% rate, which realistically could be quite aggressive. And if you're wondering how high these interest rates could go, I mean transitory inflation, remember? All jokes aside though, both the Fed and Bank of Canada are expecting to raise interest rates by an additional 75 basis points during their next meetings in October and November of this year, all of which inches us closer and closer to the rates that we experienced in and around the 2008 recession. So really, what does all of this mean? Well, for one thing, it means that forecasted economic growth throughout the next 12 to 24 months is quite low. And it also means that the Fed and Bank of Canada need to be careful in order to avoid tipping the economy further into a recession, which at this point, even the CMHC has now predicted will happen at the end of 2022. Let's actually speak a bit about the real estate market here, because again, all of this interest rate data directly impacts my portfolio. And I know a lot of you watching are hoping to scoop up your first property or two over the course of the next 12 months. There's definitely no denying that property prices surge to unsustainable levels over the course of the pandemic. But now as interest rates are rising, this is having a one-to-one -one correlation with lower demand as the cost of borrowing has more than doubled on the average property. So we're absolutely in the middle of a housing correction right now where prices are trying to settle down to a new normal before stabilizing and then starting to rise once again sometime over the course of the next couple of years. This is the exact reason why I've mentioned several times on the channel now that I personally believe the next 24 months is going to be the best window of opportunity for a first time buyer to finally jump into the market before prices continue to follow their century long growth trend. Back when rates were low, buyers could hardly get in due to the high levels of competition or quite simply because they didn't want to purchase an asset at a price point that they believed was overpaying, which isn't necessarily the wrong way of looking at things. But fast forward to today and even considering dropping home values, the actual financing costs on these homes with 20% less are the same on a monthly basis, making it hard for people to take on these costs. So the way I see things is that if you're in a position to buy right now, considering the deal is good in the first place, then waiting years potentially to time the market is probably going to burn you one way or another because typically speaking, asset price points over time are going to be in line with the cost of borrowing. Bottom line, higher interest rates are here to stay and will remain high for at least the next 12 months until we see concrete data of inflation starting to cool off. And obviously this is a completely different narrative than what we were told last year where interest rates weren't supposed to raise this rapidly and inflation was supposed to remain under control but hey this is the government we're talking about here and they can say pretty much whatever they want right all of this to say no one ultimately knows where the economy is headed so maintaining your primary income sources is paramount and focusing on your emergency fund in a high interest savings account that actually are starting to even pay some decent rates once again is going to be really important to make sure that you can weather through this next 12 to 24 month period and this is also why despite most people telling me to do otherwise I'm continuing to consistently invest, dropping a like on this video and bolstering my investment portfolio, real estate investment portfolio that is on good deals where I can appreciate the value through forced equity and bring strategic renovation to the property. By the way, if you want to learn more about that, highly recommend that you check out my full real estate investing playlist that you can check out right here on the channel, as well as all the other investing content that I already have for you for free on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please take a second to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of new and upcoming content. And don't forget to check out all the links down below in the description to get some free money for signing up and opening accounts with high interest savings accounts, as well as some stock brokerages and other platforms. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.